it's been a real learning experience from my point of view. Uh, you mean sharing some of your memories? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I want to make people aware of what to look for. Because if you don't know what to look for, then you're duped just like everybody else has been duped. You know? mm -hmm. It's not like you grew up in it. If you picked it and you thought it was a good thing, you know, that that was, if I can help this one person, spare them a bunch of grief, it's all worth it. The, the main reason I contacted you again, because I was interested in hearing your thoughts about, um, you know about what the country has been experiencing since since March, and and the reason I the reason I've I've thought of you, and others I've been able to talk to who have experience in the temple in Jonestown is just, and maybe I've been completely wrong in this, but you know, as we've been experiencing this since mid March, and now you and I are talking in mid mid July, certain things have happened that have caused my mind to go to things I've learned about the temple, things I've learned about Jones. There's a big correlation with what's going on in government today. And well, how, and how we lose more freedoms every day. I mean, I hate to put Trump in the same category as Hitler, but Hitler was elected to office also. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it scares me. I've not seen this much hate in years, you know. Uh, but that's a form of control, too, you know. you got all these drugs in here. Instead of taking money when they're in school, say they're not academically top-notch, it should be mandatory. The government spend the money up front and train these people so they can be a productive citizen. See what I'm saying? In other words, it costs $35,000 a year to keep someone in prison. You could spend $15,000 teaching them a trade, and then they're paying in to the system. And they're not, you know, they're stuck in a trap. They grow up in poverty. They don't have any step up anywhere. And they can make more money selling drugs than they can doing anything else. And I think the whole system needs to change. As far as where we're at right now, uh, current administration scares me. Uh, it's kind of like Jones. If he don't like it, it ain't true. You know, it's just uh, fake news and all this other stuff. You know, you think he would... Uh, if he was really concerned, he'd want to know the, what the other side thought. But he just miss it. He just pushes it off to one side, you know. Uh, and maybe that's just the way he is. Maybe that's what people wanted when they voted for him. But, uh, so you're saying that when you when you um, when you take a look at the top leadership today, there are certain things you see that do remind you of of Jim Jones. Yeah, definitely. We, well, you lose more freedoms every day. I'm not going to argue that seat, this is just a for instance. Yeah. Seat belt law, yeah, okay. You know, but it still should be freedom of choice. See what I'm saying? And, you know, you can go in and people smoke. And I've heard some mention, they say they were going out to make it against the law of smoking your own hands. I mean, where do we as citizens stand up and say, look here, this is not right. Yeah. People in the country that should vote don't vote. Well, do, you, do, you, do you feel that um, when you say we're losing more and more freedoms, um, do you feel like that has, uh, that has been more true in the past three months or the, since mid-March when the lockdowns related even to the virus. Before the lock, even before the lockdown, uh, and especially during the lockdown, uh, you know, the whole thing of this drugs or this uh, epidemic and stuff, I personally think that's man-made. And, you yeah. know, and 
say what you want to, but what better way of getting rid of a bunch of population? Uh, you pay out less social security, this, that, the other. And China, they they got so many people over there that, you know, I just think it's a, it's a way of slowing the population down, getting rid of the sick people, the older people. Uh, I hate to think that it'd be true, but that's what I think. You know, it doesn't sound good. But sounding good in reality sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you say we're losing freedoms, what, what kind of freedoms? Because, of course, some people on the... On the face mask, you know, issue, some people will say, well, now the government's trying to, you know, manage my face. Yeah, no, I'm not crazy like that. I think it's, yeah. uh, you know, it should be free choice. They should do it anyway. Because it sounds like you, you know, you, you think the lockdowns were sensible, but what about this part of the lockdowns of saying you can't go to church either? Well, you know, I mean, that should be someone's choice. Hmm. Uh, I think that most of the churches that I know around this area, they are doing quite a good job, especially with the larger ones that got more room to space people out. Yeah, yeah. But even at that, I don't, I don't go like I did because I'm yeah. trying to limit my own. But every once in a while, I get got to go on. Yeah. I mean, I'm just talking about for myself. Yeah. But and I don't force it on anybody. But oh. you know. It's like the gun control issue. There's no right or left of that. And if you take, I mean, I understand people are ter careless at times, uh, but there are so many guns on the street that aren't registered or some that were stolen and carved down, take the numbers up. You should have the right to bear arms in your own home and stuff. Mm. You shouldn't have the right to go out and uh, shoot everybody up. Right, sure. You know, but yeah. if you can get people off the streets and get them working, that's why my thing about the education should come first. We're treating the symptom, not not the cause. See what I'm saying? Mm. Spend a little money up front. As I'm hearing you talk, you know what's what comes up in my mind is this is why this is the kind of thing why a lot of people were attracted to the temple. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't one of Jones's pitches that, hey, look at all these obvious problems. The government isn't doing anything about it, so we got to do it ourselves. we got to fix these problems ourselves. Wasn't that one of his pitches to, to people? I think so, yeah. And that, and that but for me, that. it's equality. You know, you can't just look at one, single out one race or creed or nationality or whatever. Yeah. To me, you look at the need, and I think that we, we as Americans should be ashamed of the way that we've dealt with the Indians mm. and the way we've dealt with the blacks also. And if I had money and I could afford it, I'd put wells out there. You, you know what? what? I'm sorry? If I had enough money, and I would put wells on the reservation. We got people in this country that Go to Africa and put in wheels. Why can't we do that here too? I see. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, this was this was part of the temple's vision, right? Sort of a well, everybody getting along, and yeah, that was the idea. That was the idea, but you know, a lot of people in there believed it. Yeah. He's he's the only one who didn't believe it, mm. and that's the only reason all that that it stuck together in my mind. Meaning Jim Jones didn't believe it. No, he was he was out for the power. He liked to control people. Yeah. And and the, you know, I don't like being controlled and I guess you can see why, but yeah. Even as a society we have to watch how much control without, you know, people going and picketing and stuff. We need that. It brings, it brings uh, attention to the bad stuff. And we can't fix what we don't see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe I'm an idealist. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I, 
you know, and I, I won't say I'm trying to right any cuckoos to Jones at all. No, but as a as a how I live my life, that's how I live. Yeah, I mean, you know, because people say, you know, people ask, well, how could, you know, how could people have been attracted to, how could people have been attracted to the temple, right? Well, a lot of times they, they were attracted because he made it, he made it easy. They didn't have to pay their own bills. Mm -hmm. You know, it started out 10%, 25%, and then he'd put you somewhere and take 100% and then give you $10 or $20 a month for your personalized you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so you know, I, yeah but the but the the ideas that you've been expressing the past few minutes i mean if you know if a if an organization comes along and you look at them and oh well they do seem to be helping the elderly and they oh they are doing they are they have a food program and oh they are helping people reform themselves when they come out of prison it's not hard to see why people would be attracted to that kind of movement. You know, Definitely, and if they had a drug issue, you know. Yeah. I mean, even though he was on them, they got people off the drug. Yeah. There were some good aspects, you know. I mean, I've seen some of it. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. but see, that was a catch thing there, you know. So he, would, he would shop for a wealthy family and get a hold of one person because he knew if he could get that one in there, he'd be tapping some of their resources. Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you, you know, I, I want to tell you there's there's one particular thing that happened with me that, you know, brought this theme to my mind. And I'll tell you what that is. But first I want to ask you, I mean, have you, you know, has anything happened, you know, recently? And it, I guess it doesn't have to be recently, but I am thinking about, kind of this really weird place the country's been in since mid-March, since, you know, we went into this coronavirus lockdown. Have you seen any particular things or heard any particular things or experienced any particular things where you thought, wow, that reminds me of Jones. That reminds me of the temple. That reminds me of Jonestown. Well, you're not getting out and picketing, you know. The protesting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of that the very first time I've seen it. Well, I was like, hey, caught some place on fire or something. And it kind of put me back in the day when we went out and picketed for Angela Davis to try to help get her out of prison. Oh. And kind of brought that right back to the memory, you know. And, uh, yeah. So when, when the George Floyd protesting started, oh, it yeah. reminded you of, of protests you participated in, well, you were a little kid, but the temple participated in for well, Davis. That, that was when, I, when we were in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, so you were a young teenager then at that point, is that right? right. Somewhere. Yeah, Angela Davis, yeah. And so in your view, the, the, the key problem then in your, in your view is the current administration. I think it's got a lot to do with the temperament of everyone off because from the time that man was in office, there's not a day that can go by. You are drowned out on the TV about something stupid he said, which almost all of it is, but you know, that's my thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just constantly, we turn TV off, it's so bad. I can't take it. I can't yeah, take it. I, hear, I, I hear you. I mean, I'm in no other time. I, I voted for Carter, said, hey, how far back it goes. Uh, I've never seen an administration, president, anybody, that all the presidents, they have maybe twice, three times a year. This guy's on TV almost every day. This guy's what? I miss that. He's on TV every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, special bulletin, special. It's the same thing they done said 50 times. You know, on other special bulletins. I think say so much and not say nothing is amazing. I guess that's politics. <laughs> uh, how does how does as you look at all this, you know, does your experience in the temple at Jonestown, you know, does do do you think that, you know, the, the views you're expressing right now are partly shaped by your experience in people's people's temple Jonestown, or do you think you would have the same views? Uh, I, think, I think that 
there's no way it couldn't be partially uh, by the way I grew up. You know, I'm kind of a. I mean, if I can, here's just here's just what I'm what I'm thinking in response to what you're saying right now. You know, bouncing off what you were just saying, that this experience of being a child and now you're an adolescent in the temple, which is led by a, sh a showman, basically, a convincing, at least convincing to some people. Some people look at him and think he's a buffoon. Some people look at him and think he's God. I know. Um, Very. Huh. And, you know, and so, I mean, are you, is this the kind of thing you're talking about, this kind of experience of, of seeing how kind of a charismatic figure? Um, They're more in one way of controlling people. You can control them by uh, accessing the hate that they have inside. See, and that's bad because that shows that there's underlying racism that we didn't or hadn't missed or even seen before. And in my mind, that, that's sad. And whether it's from uh, being in Jones's church all my life, I don't know, I can't really say that, but mm. I, I have freedom of my own choice. Where my mind keeps going is I'm listening to you, and I've already said this, but you know, just even as you're just talking, um, you know, it, this, the, the question arises, well, how could people have joined the temple, you know? But as I'm listening to you, I'm saying, well, you know, if you've got a leader who seems convincing, who seems sincere, who's actually, who is actually delivering, actually is helping old people, who actually does have programs in place that help people, um, then people with, you know, who share the, the views that you have, some of them back. are going to be attracted to that to that sure, movie. because in their own sense they get trust you know and even if the person that you're trusting is manipulating you if you trust them mm. you kind of knock down that block you know that right. safety zone you know what I'm saying yeah uh, I still trust is really hard for me uh, mm. Because survival in Jonestown and in the church, uh, you couldn't trust anybody. Because mm. even if they were your friends or family, you couldn't trust anyone. Because if you said something that they didn't like, they'd run straight up there to tell it. And, and we as people, you know, it makes a lot of people want to feel good about thinking they're doing the right thing. But, in, you know, they're not doing the right thing. They're, they're being manipulated from the start also. So that's my take on So you have a movement that, you know, a lot of sincere people with good motivations get into. But as, as time goes on, as they get deeper into it, as the leader himself kind of becomes a little more and more unhinged as time goes on. Well, that's what I say about losing control. It doesn't happen all at once. And it's like, you can bring more society in a slow manner, and they don't realize it. Now, that's something that's come to me, you know, that I related to as the past. And I can't give you a specific thing, but there's different stuff that I've watched on the news. You just feel like, it's, so you're, you're saying, and obviously, People's Temple Jonestown and American society in 2020 are different things, right? Oh, yeah. But, but human beings are the same, right? I mean, human, exactly. human nature is the same. We'll put it that way. Right. So, so here's what I'm hearing you say right now, that just as you have folks in the temple who, for whatever reason, in some sense, kind of stop thinking for themselves... You feel like you're seeing the same thing in American society that fewer and fewer people are thinking for themselves? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Big time. Let me just, just ask you this one last question then. Um, suppose you're given a, a, you know, a big platform you know, to talk to a lot of people and, and uh, the way you are introduced is, you know, here's Thomas Bikeman and, and um, you know, he's like, he's like, you know, 
a lot of other people, had a job and has a home in Indiana and family, et cetera. Uh, but he does have, you know, pretty unusual experience as a kid and then as a as an adolescent, you know, as a as a teenager. And so we're going to give Thomas a, a chance to, you know, draw on his experience and say, look, this is what the American people need to know. What would you, what would you say? Be more involved in the system. Uh, I think involvement has decreased over the years where your communities used to get together. Communities don't get together. And that's one reason you have uh, such a different opinion from race to race. And, you know, when I went to school in California back then, they taught race relations when I went to school. In, 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 in Indiana, Indiana, I don't know if they're doing it now, but they're talking about it. So what took so long from point A to point B? It should be a mandatory subject. And it doesn't have to be one-sided. Mm. I mean, if you go back and look during the Korean War, what happened in this country, a lot of them people were, were born here, you know. So mm. my fear is that we could end up in a real bad state where people are segregated, kind of like what happened in Germany. And people say, oh, that would never happen again. Don't bet on it. The total collapse is, uh, I think it's coming, and I think people should prepare for it. Do you think that um, that a lot of the stuff about the coronavirus, do you think that a lot of the stuff about the coronavirus is really just trying to keep people afraid so that they can be more easily controlled? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a man-made thing. I can't tell you who introduced it. I have no idea, but, you know, there's a lot of things that our government has done in the past that, uh, you know, it, in my mind, Jonestown was a form of mind control experiment, and I do believe in, you know, in the 70s and back then, he was affiliated in some way with that. And in my mind, it was an experiment to see how far you can go in the regular population and what you have to do to gain that control. See yeah. what I'm saying? Related to that, then, do you feel like some similar experiment is going on now? I mean, you know, how much can we, how much con control can we get over the American population if we just keep them in a state of anxiety all the time? Well, I'm, I'm not asserting that. I'm just is that. Well, I mean, it it takes your mind away from everything else. That's true. I mean, there's only one topic of con. It's, it's either the converse, the topic of conversation is either the virus or the civil unrest. I mean, what else? You right. Know? You know, and and I kind of think both of them were preordained, and that's my opinion. Not everyone would agree with that, but I, that's what I. Yeah. And that's what scares me. You know, I mean, I'm not going to be around that much longer anyway. But I, I worry about the kids down the road. Well, Mr. Bachman, I really appreciate you uh, you taking this time again to, to share your thoughts. And uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you. Oh, doing. that's all right. Anytime, anything I can do to help you out, I'm more than happy to.